Hey guys, what's up? It's Dean with Manpo Yoga and welcome to Body by Yoga Pre-K. So this is the workout that we're making for the upcoming DVDs that is the building block to our Yoga Basics series. So this is a video, this is a workout for someone who's never done yoga before. Maybe someone who's had a history of working out. Maybe someone who's a bodybuilder and just has zero flexibility and needs a little bit a little bit more of a, an assist to help get them up to the point of doing regular yoga and building into that flexibility. And it also might be someone who has never done um, any sort of organized physical fitness program. So this is for people who are very inflexible, want to do yoga, but they need a little bit more of a foundational block before they move on. For this series, we're going to be using a chair for a lot of it. We're not using the chair to help hold up your body weight. The point of the chair is actually so that you can get into areas that you wouldn't be able to without the chair. So it's going to make poses that require more flexibility a lot more accessible to people who just don't have that flexibility by bringing the ground up to you. This is also going to help you focus on your alignment as you do the poses instead of building incorrect alignment and then doing that repeated incorrect motion over time, which leads to injury. So that's kind of a quick introduction into what you can expect from this edition of Body by Yoga. The reason why we're putting this up on YouTube is because we want your feedback on it. We want to know, did the workout make sense? Did the technique explanation make sense? Did the poses make sense? Um, Again, we want your feedback. So feel free to leave comments, send emails, dean at Manful Yoga, and we will take into account your thoughts and make this the best yoga DVD on the market. Um, one part that we don't really need feedback on is the quality of the video. This is being filmed by, with an iPad, in my apartment. So, well that will improve significantly. We're going to be filming this DVD quality in, uh, in a studio and also at an upper end uh, gym in Brooklyn uh, when we do film this. Film this. So, uh, without much more, let's, uh, let's get started and go to bodybyyoga.training and you can sign up for our beta testing list there for free. So, first pose that we're going to do is a chair pose. So I want your feet touching, toes touching, heels about an inch apart. Your knees just bend just a tiny bit, and then push your butt way back. Then it'll feel like you're kind of sitting down into a chair. Keep your spine flat. So you want to feel your core engaged. When I say core engaged, I mean you feel these muscles in your stomach working, tensing, and you feel that burning sensation in these muscles. Your back should also be flat here. No pain in your lower back. I want you to take your arms up like this to goalpost arms, and then slowly straighten your arms to the point that you can without arching your back. So if you start to arch like this as your arms get higher, don't lift your arms up anymore. You'll feel your glutes working, your buttock, you're also going to feel your thighs, your core, and you'll feel stretching in your shoulders. There's a lot of reasons why we do yoga. The four that I'm going to name right now, we're building strength, building flexibility, building bodily awareness, reducing the risk of injury, and also helping you to be present in the present moment so that you can really focus on technique and focus on the workout at hand. All right, go ahead and sit down all the way into your chair as slowly as you can with control, and then keep that erect spine, keep that engaged core. We're gonna to go to a simple twist. Left hand outside on the back of the chair, right hand outside your left knee. Sit up tall and twist. Poke your head up toward the ceiling. Try to keep your hips facing straight forward. So twisting is important because we want to maintain or improve the range of motion in your spine. This is important for spinal health. If you have a healthy spine, the rest of your body will follow. This is also good for core strength, which you need to prevent lower back pain. Go ahead and take it back to center. 
Lightly twist toward the opposite side. Right hand on the back of the chair. Left hand outside your knee. Again, keeping your chest lifted, keeping your shoulders relaxed, and keeping your core really strong here. Using your core, using your back strength to twist, and not just trying to crack your back. Your neck is part of your back. Make sure you're looking over with your head to the side as well. Bring it back to center, and then from here, open up your legs. Reach your chest as far forward as possible into a seated forward fold. And the reason why we're doing this on a chair instead of on in a standing position, go ahead and drop your neck so it's completely relaxed. It's because we want you to feel the stretch in your lower back and in your spine. And more often than not, a lot of inflexible people have very tight, very tight legs, very tight hamstrings. And if we do this in a standing position, you will feel the stretch in your hamstrings and not your lower back. So this modification with a chair allows you to feel the stretch in your spine. You should have no wrinkles in your neck as you perform the seated forward fold. All right, we're gonna move out of this. Bring your hands back up to your thighs. Sit up tall again, just like you did when you sat into the chair, and then cross your right leg over your left thigh. This is called a gentleman's stretch. Relax your right knee toward the ground, you can lightly press your right knee toward the ground just using your leg strength, but don't press it down with your hand. That can lead to injury, injuring your ligaments in your knees. Reach your toes back toward your shins so these toes are active. Keep nice and tall here. And the goal of this is to stretch your right buttock now, the side of the leg that is crossed over. You'll also feel the stretch in your lower back. And if you were to do this stretch in the, the other version of this pose, which is called pigeon, most likely would be extremely uncomfortable and your knee would prevent you from going further just because of the pain in your knee. Go ahead and switch sides now. Keep upright, switch sides. So this is targeting your glutes, which are very rarely stretched. You sit a lot during the day, I'm assuming, and those muscles just kind of turn to mush while you're seated. So it's important to get these muscles Stretching, get the range of motion, and then build strength within that range of motion once you open those muscles up. Sit up a little bit taller. Remember, if you want to press lightly, you can, but don't push down hard. Just relax this knee toward the ground and keep these toes and your left foot active, reaching back toward the shins. Go ahead and untuck. All right, and then from here, go ahead and stand up. We're moving into the standing part. And for this, I want you to bring the chair in front of you now, like this. Now, the chair is going to have two levels. You have the back of the chair, that's level one, and then you have the seat of the chair, level two. So depending on your hamstring or your lower back flexibility, you'll be able to fold deeper to level one or to level two. First stretch we're going to do is a modified pyramid pose. So your right foot is facing forward, drop your left foot back a couple feet and point your left foot out 45 degrees. Square your hips up toward the front so that your right and your left hip are even facing the chair. And then slightly bend your right knee, lean forward with your back as flat as possible. Bring your hands to the back of the chair, keep the length in your spine. So here you should feel stretching in the back of your right thigh your butt, and then your hamstring, and you also feel core engagement. Your core is working to straighten your spine and hold your body up. If this is easy, you can lower your hands down to level two. Just make sure you're keeping your back flat here and your hips squared up toward the front. Pull your body forward, relax your chin toward your throat so that your spine is flat. Remember, your neck is part of your spine. And then from here, step your left foot up on top of the chair. Stand up tall, slide your right arm across your knee, left hand to your hip, and twist. So again, the reason why we're doing twists is to help maintain or improve the range of motion of your spine. And that's going to keep your spine healthy. Back surgeries are expensive, so this is a good thing to do every day. 
Roll back your shoulder, press your head forward and lengthen your spine. And you should be able to lift your arm off here. You're using your core strength and your back strength to twist, not your elbow. And from here, we'll go back to center, lower your foot down, and switch sides. So now the left foot's going to come back. Sorry, the right foot's coming back. Point it out at a 45 degree angle. Left hip back, right hip forward so that your hips are squared up toward the front. Lightly bend into your left knee, keep your back leg straight, and then maintaining the straightness in your spine, lean forward. Bring your hands to the back of the chair, and from here you can lean forward more if you have the flexibility, taking it to level two in the chair, or just keep it up here if you're already feeling a nice stretch through your hamstrings and your left glute. Now it's important to have flexibility in your hamstrings to help prevent the risk of injury. So even if you don't play sports, you can still injure your hamstrings just walking outside, maybe slipping on some ice that can tear your hamstring, that can do damage. So it's important to stay supple in your muscles. This will also help you increase power in your muscles. All right, moving up to that balance, right foot on top of the chair, Chop at the chair, top of the chair, and slide your left elbow across your right knee. Pull your torso forward, create length in your torso, and then look over toward the right. You bring your right hand on your right hip. And again, here you're using your core strength and your back strength to twist, not using your elbow to just crank open your back and twist. One more breath here. Again, as tall, as long as you can in your spine, and then take it back to center, lower your right foot down. All right, now I want your right foot out in front. I want your knee right on top of your ankle, right up against the chair, so that if you were to bend your knee any further, you would hit the chair. This is gonna prevent your knee from going forward too much. Lower your hands onto the chair, take a big step back with your left foot, and lower your neck knee to the ground for a low lunge. Work on squaring up your hips to the front. So. Hands to your hips to help out. Make sure your hips are level. Belly button facing straight forward. And then press down through your right foot. Try to tuck your butt under your torso so that pelvic, pelvic alignment, making sure that there's a neutral pelvic alignment here, meaning that your pelvis is not aiming down or up, but that it's facing straight forward. So that's going to help relieve pain in your lower back, strengthen your core, and improve your posture. From here, bring your arms out to goalpost arms. Make sure your, core, your forearms are parallel, uh, parallel to the walls, and then slowly extend your arms up. You should feel stretching in the front of your left hip. You should feel your core working here, these muscles in the front of your stomach working, and feel stretching in your armpits and in your shoulders. All right, from here, lower your hands onto the chair, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee into a runner's lunge. So you don't want to lean so forward here that your knee presses into the chair. Remember, your knee is staying right above your ankle. Pull your torso forward, so kind of like we have in that pyramid exercise, keeping your torso long, not letting your chest fall down like this, but keeping length in your torso to help strengthen your core. All right, you release your hands off the chair for a little bit more of a challenge, and then step back up, back to standing. Now we're gonna go through what's called a half sun salutation. So I want your toes touching, step back a little bit further away from the chair, arms at your sides, shoulders relax. Take a big breath in, lift your arms overhead as you do so. Look up, and as you exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees. Lower your chest toward the ground. Use the chair if you need to, so that you feel a stretch in your lower back as you fold here. Bend your knees as much as you need to, so you feel the stretch in your spine and in your hamstrings. It's just in your hamstrings, just in your legs. Bend your knees a little bit more. From here, half lift. Half lift, I want you to make your spine parallel to the ground. So bend your knees a lot. Pull your torso forward. Use the chair to help align your body. Doesn't matter if you're resting weight on it. We want you to get the right technique first, and then you can try it. 
without any assistance. But technique is more important than holding up your weight in this instance. Go ahead and fold back down so you're relaxing your chest back toward your thighs, bending your knees as much as possible, hands on the chair, maybe on the ground. From here, drop your butt down, pull your chest forward, lift your arms out wide. Press your hands together at the top, and then bring your hands back in front of your stern. Now we're gonna go to the other side. So, left foot is forward now, knee on top of your ankle, Lower your hands to the chair, step your right foot to the back, lower your knee down into a low lunge. Again, square your hips up so that your belly button is facing straight forward. And then that little scoop to bring your butt under your body and make sure that these muscles in the front of your stomach are working. And that's going to help you get a deeper stretch in the front of your back hip. From here, you bring your arms up to goalpost arms and slowly extend your arms up. So we've got our core working here, we've got stretching in the right hip. If you haven't been working out for a while, you might also feel some pressure, some, some tension holding up some weight in your left thigh. That's a good thing. That means that you're using the right muscles. You can extend your arms up higher as long as you're not arching your back to do so. And then lower your hands down to the chair, tuck your back toes. Lift your back knee into a runner's lunge. So here, you will feel the stretch in your right hip. You'll also feel your core working to hold you up, and your left thigh should be working to hold you up here. If you're feeling strong, feeling confident here, you can take your hands off the chair and just hold up your body right with your legs. Go ahead and step back up to standing. And then we're going to go to a second half sun salutation. Toes touching, step away from the chair, arms at your sides. Big breath up, lift your arms. Exhale and fold. Bend your knees, arms out wide. Lower your hands to the chair. Bring your chest toward your thighs. Feel the stretch in your lower back, in your spine, and in your hamstrings. Make sure that you're feeling it in all of those places, not just the hamstrings your thighs, bend your knees to feel it more in your back. Go into a half lift. Try to make your upper body parallel to the ground. So bend your knees as much as you need to. Use the chair to help support your upper body. And you can work on form here while you're using your arms to support your body weight. If you have a mirror, it's a really good way to make sure that your back is flat. And then you'll know what it feels like to have that stretching sensation in your back and this engagement in your core. Chin toward your throat, looking down at the ground, and then forward fold. <sighs> Bend your knees, chest toward your thighs. Again, hands on the chair for that support so that you get a stretch in your lower back. Drop your butt down, pull your chest forward, arms out wide, lift all the way back up. And bring your hands back to center. All right, from here we're going to do a modified down dog. So this is going to be a down dog using the chair. Step back a couple feet away from the chair, reach out, grab the back of the chair with your hands, and try to get your arms behind your body as much as possible. Make sure that your shoulder blades are plugging into your back. So it's as if you're pulling your shoulder blades together, making sure that your shoulder blades aren't winging. Okay, and then press down through your hands, bring your feet about four inches apart, bend your knees to flatten out your back, and then press your chest toward the ground. So this is a modified down dog. This is going to help you feel what it likes, feels what, it, what it's like to do down dog, but with, uh, with the modified flexibility, okay? So bending the knees, pushing your butt back, making sure you have core engagement. So feeling your core working, the front part of your stomach working, and that will help flatten out your back. Bend your knees as much as you'd like to to make this happen. You can relax your neck, look down at the ground. So down dog, 
The goal here with down dog is to first feel it in your lower back and then to feel it in your hamstrings. So bend your knees as much as you need to, again, so you feel the stretching in your lower back. Lower back stretching is triggered by engagement, by working these muscles in your abdomen. So if your abs are not working here, if you don't feel it there, you're probably not getting a lower back stretch. You will also feel stretching in your shoulders, your upper back, and around your armpits. All right, walk back up, take it back into standing. All right, and from here we're gonna move into a warrior one pose. So warrior poses are kind of the foundational strength building exercises of, of yoga for your lower body. Very popular poses, you'll find them in almost every yoga class that you go to. We're gonna make this a little bit easier by shortening the distance between your legs. So I want you to start with your right foot forward, your left foot back about two and a half feet, and then bending your right knee over your ankle. So it's very similar to the modified pyramid pose that we started out in. Pull your right hip back, your left hip forward, and make sure that your butt is under your torso. So you're not letting your butt poke out behind you, you're not letting your lower back arch, but instead, you're bringing it under your body, keeping your core nice and strong. Knee over your ankle in your front foot. You feel some stretching in the front of your left hip and in the back of your left leg, lower leg. From here, slowly bring your arms up to goalpost arms. And then as you're ready, slowly start to straighten your arms, but not to the point where you start to arch your back. So keeping your chest, your ribs drawn in toward one another as you straighten your arms. This is going to help you build real shoulder flexibility and not just arching your back. From here, we're gonna move into a balance pose. Lower your hands to the back of the chair. Press down through your right foot. You're moving into warrior three here, balancing on your right leg. Turn your left hip down so that your hips are level. Pull your body forward. And here you feel stretching in the back of your right leg. You also feel your right leg working to hold you up. And notice my toes and my left foot. I'm going to point my toes back as much as possible. I want to keep, again, my core is engaged here. I'm not arching my back like this. I'm keeping my spine as flat as possible. You can slowly remove one arm, slowly remove the other arm to balance here, or keep your hands on the chair. If you cramped up at all on your back foot, that's completely normal. That might happen the first few times until your body gets used to it. From here, go ahead and step back to that warrior one position. And then we're gonna move into a hamstring and calf stretch. Bring your foot up, up on the chair, square your hips up toward the chair, and then lean forward, bend your knee as much as you need to, grab the back of the chair, reach your toes back toward your shin, for a leg stretch. You'll also feel this in your lower back, your calf, and the back of your right thigh. If you want to get a deeper stretch in your calf, bring your right hand to your toes and pull the toes back toward your shin. This is gonna get a really nice stretch in your calf. And the calves are actually the tightest muscle in your body. So this is a good idea if you feel like your calves are tight. Maybe you don't think your calves are tight, they probably are. All right, go ahead and release that pose. We're gonna go back to standing and we'll go to the opposite side. So left foot forward, right foot back, point it out 45 degrees, pull your left hip back, your right hip forward, butt under your torso, bend into your left knee, moving into warrior one. So remember, I wanna keep the straight line from my pubic bone up to my sternum as I'm doing this stretch. I want to make sure that I'm not doing this, not arching forward, but keeping that straight line. Back leg stays straight, so I'm feeling the stretch in my calf and in the front of my right hip. Knee over the ankle in the front hip. If that's too hard, bring your feet a little bit closer together. You can work into your flexibility. You can work, you can get proper form first and then get deeper, but it doesn't work the other way around. So make sure that your technique is correct. From here, bring your arms up, slowly extend your arms straight up. And you'll feel this working your left thigh to support your body weight. 
And again, feeling that stretching in the front of your back, thigh, and in your calf, the lower leg. From here, lower your hands to the chair. Press down through your left foot. Bring your hips on top, just above your left ankle. And then bring your right hip down so that your hips are level. Point your toes toward the back. Pull your body forward for an assisted warrior three. Now, the reason why we're doing this, one, you might not have the balance to do it without the chair. Two, we're, all, we're doing it because I want you to make sure that you have the proper hip alignment, that your hips are not open like this to the side, but that your hips are level and that you're doing this pose correctly so that as you build strength within it, as you get better, you're doing it in a way that your body won't get hurt. So it's important to use these modifications to get better so that you get stronger in the right way. All right, from here, step back to that warrior one position. Remember, we're gonna stretch the left leg now, left leg up on top of the chair. Reach your toes back toward your shin, toes back toward your shin. Bend the left knee if you need to. Lean forward with your back as flat as possible. Bend the knee a lot, maybe and then reach your toes back toward your shin. So this is a really nice way to stretch out your hamstrings and your calves. It's a very common stretch given in physical therapy. So it's a good way to stay out of the doctor's office by doing these exercises, by staying healthy. Flexibility is a very good thing for your muscles. All right, go ahead and release your foot, step back up. We've got one more pose. We're gonna go, sorry, two more poses. We're gonna go into a warrior two. So for this, start with your feet slightly spread, facing out to the side. Turn your right foot to face forward, and then bend into your knee, knee over your ankle. Your hips are facing straight out to the side, but your right knee should be bending directly forward. Keep your shoulders right on top of your hips as you bend into your right knee. You wanna make sure that your knee is right on top of your ankle. So if your knee is past your ankle, you're going to hit the chair, All right? So use that chair. It's a tool that helped. From here, extend your arms out to the sides, one arm pointing to the back of the room, the other arm pointing forward, and then look straight over your right hand. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. This is going to help reduce the tension in your shoulders. And if, you, if you work a lot or if you're stressed, there's a lot of it in your shoulders. So this is full body. We've got the groin stretch going on. We've got strength building in the front leg. Your back leg is staying straight. You should feel some stretching in your back ankle. You should feel stretching in your shoulders, your core, your abdomen working. And this twist in your neck, very important for maintaining range of motion in your neck and keeping your neck healthy. All right, go ahead and relax and we'll switch sides. So now left foot closer to the front of the mat, right foot toward the back. Turn your left foot out, so it's facing straight out to the side. Keep your hips, sorry, facing straight forward, and then keep your hips facing directly out to the side. Go ahead and bend into your left knee, so your knee is over your ankle, and then make sure that your butt is under your body. So you don't want your butt poking out behind you like this, and then doing something like this, but you want your butt under your shoulders. That way you have proper hip alignment and you'll get the stretch in your groin while maintaining the integrity of your spine. So keeping your spine healthy as you work into your hip flexibility. If this is too hard, bring your feet a little bit closer together. Again, technique is more important than how deep you get into the pose. Arms out to the side, shoulders relaxed, bend into your left knee, look over your left hand. You feel stretching on the inside of your left thigh and your groin. Also feel the stretch in your ankle and your right foot. Feel stretching in your shoulders and your biceps as you push your hands away from one another. And feel stretching in your neck as you twist and look over your left hand. Go ahead and relax. Take it back to standing facing the front of the room. One more balancing pose. Back to facing out to the side, facing to the left. Plant your left, your right heel on top of the chair. Hips facing out to the side. Reach your toes back toward your shin and lift your arms up. Bend your elbows if you'd like to, to help keep 
keep your chest, prevent your chest from arching open. And when your chest arches, your back bends and your core is not yet the proper engagement. You're not building good posture when you're arching like this. So keep your core engaged, keep your back flat. And instead of reaching all the way up, keep your arms bent to work on your shoulder flexibility. You'll feel stretching here on the inside of your right leg and feel your left leg working here to hold you up. Go ahead and relax and we'll switch sides. So now facing the right side of the room, left foot on top of the chair, hips still facing straight out to the side. Feeling the stretch now on the inside of the left thigh, the adductors. Reaching your toes back toward your shin to get your calf involved. Remember the tightest muscle in your body. And then slowly lifting your arms up, maybe straightening your arms somewhat. Try to keep your shoulders back and down as you lift your arms. This is going to help you build flexibility into your shoulders and your upper back instead of simply faking your way up by lifting your shoulders up near your ears. And that will also cause additional stress in your shoulders. Go ahead and relax. Step back up to standing facing the front of the room. Okay, so that's it. Everything was on your feet for this Body by Yoga pre-K workout. Um, we used the chair for a lot of modifications to help bring the ground up to you, um, make it more accessible to inflexible people. At the same time, we hope you got a decent workout. So looking forward to your feedback, share it with people who you think are not that flexible and need this kind of workout, or give us feedback if you yourself are flexible or inflexible and this helped you make, uh, make it feel like yoga was more accessible. So my name is Dean, this project is the Body by Yoga Project and we are looking forward to your feedback. Um, Bodybyyoga.training. <sighs> Put everything else I forgot in the description below. Deuces.